Annual budget presentation for uh, fiscal year 2020 to 2023 by our county manager, Mike McCree. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute Section 159-11, I'm presenting to you as budget officer the recommended fiscal year 2022-23 budget for Curry Tuck County. Under the North Carolina uh, Local Government and Fiscal Control Act, a balanced budget uh, <coughs> must be presented to the Board of Commissioners by June 1, uh, and a balanced budget must be adopted by June 30th. The budget that is being presented to you tonight is balanced as required by law using the current property tax rate of 46 cents per $100 of assessed valuation. One of the major purposes for the county's annual budget is to develop a fiscally responsible plan that accomplishes the Board of Commissioners' priorities and furthers its strategic vision. In prior retreats and work sessions with staff, this board has established the following themes that this budget seeks, uh, seeks to respond to. First of all, uh, that the county would maintain quality and efficient services, continuous partnership with Curry Tuck County Schools using an agreed formula to fund uh, school uh, appropriations and capital construction <coughs> needs, uh, to increase pay for all employees, to retain and recruit quality employees and soften economic pressures they are experiencing and to enhance the county's infrastructure uh, to address and prepare for continued development and population growth. Uh, this recommended budget will move the county forward, I believe, in achieving those stated goals and purposes. It is also one of the major responsibilities of the board uh, to develop and establish the fiscal, uh, the fiscal uh, plan for the county as you carry forth your philosophy on how you intend to see the county grow and develop. Our annual, annual balance budget consists of 27 different funds. It's not just one fund, but an amalgamation of funds that we put together. As we get into the general fund discussion, I first want to note that th this recommended budget comes at a time when the board uh, in Curry Tuck County is experiencing uh, Curry Tuck as one of the fastest growing counties in North Carolina, rivaling the growth scene in the Raleigh, Durham, and Charlotte metro areas. The United States Census Bureau tells us that, it, that there was a recorded 19.3% population increase in the county between 2010 and 2020. By contrast, the state of North Carolina population increased 9.5%. The North Carolina Office of State Budget and Management projects an additional 29% population increase for Curry Tuck County from 2020 to 2040. Much of the county's growth, as we know, is occurring within the Moyoc community, which is expected to experience the construction of an additional 2,200 housing units by 2030. Growth is often viewed as progress and opportunity, but growth can strain the county's financial resources. As one of three counties in the state with no municipalities, the county funds services that are traditionally provided by municipalities within other counties. This additional responsibility places greater financial burden on the county to maintain and provide critical infrastructure, public safety response, human services, and capital for school needs. Going forward in the coming fiscal year, fiscal year and as a proactive response to expected growth and demand on county resources, the board can expect uh, to develop and adopt a multi-year capital improvement plan uh, going forward and further as the county enters the beginning of a, another two-year uh, budget cycle, uh, the board can expect to spend more time with staff evaluating and providing vision for the county's strategic response to issues related to growth. Now the recommended budget totals $126,914,856 for all county operations. The general fund is uh, 68,000, dollars $68, of that amount. <coughs> the general fund is a fund through which education, human services, public safety, community services, planning, and general government is provided. It's primarily supported by the property tax, sales tax, and other general purpose revenues. Yep. Can you back up? Yes, I've got a, we got a head there. 
That one right there. I just wanted to point out that um, you know we're still the ninth lowest tax rate out of 100 counties in the state of North Carolina. That kind of went through quickly. So well, we're gonna we're gonna slow up and, and show that. Okay. Um, <laughs> for, first of all, our tax base valuation because. The, the greatest part of our funding resource is the property tax. Um, we, we, we rely upon the, uh, real, the valuation of our real property. And so our real property valuation has grown over the last fiscal year by 0.03% so that we, are, we now have a real uh, property valuation of $8.229 billion in Curry Tuck County. As you can see, it, we, we continue to, to be now on an upward trend after having gone down slightly um, or earlier in the previous decade. This is an interesting slide also to see the tax base by region in Curry Tuck County. We've, we've often, or some have measured uh, the county's tax base by um, the, the beach properties versus the mainland properties. The last fiscal year, you may have uh, recalled that the uh, mainland was at that point in time 51 percent of the assessed value in curry tuck county with uh, the beach about 49 uh, percent now you can see that in, in this coming fiscal year it's anticipated that there will be again a 50 50 50 even split although we would anticipate that, that in the next fiscal year following the coming one uh, that with the growth that's going on in the mainland that we will see that shift again uh, to, to there being more assessed value uh, in the, on the mainland. As Commissioner White pointed out, our property tax rate is uh, proposed to re remain at 46 cents, which continues a stable uh, tax rate that we've been able to enjoy for a, a good number of years. Yeah, because I, I know back in the 80s it was like a dollar five or something. Yes. Yeah, it was and way up there. So we've been come a long way since the 80s. That's right. It's been and stable it, since 95. Yes. yes. That's right. And the services yes. for the 46 cent, you can't compare it to anywhere. No. Yeah, the, the county has been very fortunate to be able to yeah. provide the services that it has over the years. Uh, and as Commissioner White pointed out, that uh, Curry Tuck County, we are uh, the ninth uh, lowest tax rate. Uh, in the state, the average state uh, tax rate being almost 68 cents for $100. And just uh, a question, uh, the, the point you mentioned earlier, of those counties that you've got listed under lowest, are any of those also without municipalities? Well, that's an important point uh, <laughs> because we often only look at the county tax rate and don't take into consideration the municipal rate uh, that may also should be added to those county rates. So. I believe all of those counties that are they all have municipalities with us as the lowest certainly have municipalities, and so uh, this does not truly reflect what a citizen in one of those counties uh, would pay if they live within a municipality in their county. Just go two counties over. That's correct. Pasquotank, their their uh, town tax rate is equal to the county tax rate. Right. And like you said, in Dare too, almost all of Dare, you know, they're having a, a municipality. So this is a, just a uh, illustration of the Curry Tuck County tax rate versus the average state uh, tax rate over the oh. years. It's like a Tetris graph. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't. Res I couldn't leave that one alone. <laughs> and again, our, ours will remain uh, consistent with the with, with the last year's. Uh, tax rate. Uh, this slide shows the general fund revenue sources for the county. As I said a moment ago, property tax is 54% of the largest portion of the revenue base uh, for the county. I would note that fund balance uh, is also being appropriated, proposed for appropriation in this budget in the amount of $2,366,921. Um, um, it is the 39, that is a 39% lower appropriation than was appropriated uh, from fund balance in the current fiscal year budget. It's also noteworthy that the fiscal year 21 fund balance, and that's the last uh, audit that we received, ended the fiscal year in the total amount of $35,113,845. That's for all fund balances that comprise the county's 
budgets, uh, un unassigned, unassigned fund balance at the end of fiscal year 21 was $20,953,942, which was an impressive increase of $9,889,055 in unrestricted fund balance. But re remember, <coughs> That, Bless you. that growth in fund balance was appropriated in this current fiscal year uh, to fund school capital construction. <coughs> Why do we have a fund balance? We have a fund balance uh, in order to um, be able to provide for operations and cash flow uh, for uh, Basically, three months is what the local government commission likes counties to maintain, uh, which is about 8% uh, of your operating budget. Um, for coastal counties and communities, of course, the local government commission and certainly rating agencies that rate uh, debt want to see a, a greater uh, fund balance um, somewhere in the 20 to 30% range, and so that's what we seek to maintain. Uh, that, that's another area in which I, w I want the board to engage in the coming fiscal year for us to, to evaluate and truly establish a fund balance policy as many other communities have done so that we don't maintain too much fund balance but we don't maintain too little as well. But that should be a, a board considered and adopted policy in my view. So uh, again, again, looking at our assessed value um, and our projected levy, we see that from our assessed valuation of real property and motor vehicles uh, based on a 46 six cents tax rate, uh, that our projected net levy of tax revenue uh, for the coming fiscal year is anticipated to be $37,505,112. Um, and that's based on a over 99% over uh, tax collection rate. We can always do better and reach 100, but we uh, do pretty pretty well among counties at, at over a 99% tax collection rate. Okay. <clears throat> this uh, slide shows the general fund appropriations by departmental function. As you can see, public safety, that's uh, sheriff's office, uh, fire, and EMS uh, uh, receive approximately 38% of the county's appropriations with education coming in behind at 24 percent, um, general government at 17 percent. But, but, but another important aspect of this slide is that this also represents people who work for the citizens of Curry Tuck County and for this board in carrying out um, the county operations. And, and so as part of this uh, budget, there is proposed, um, because competitive competitiveness is becoming uh, increasingly difficult in what appears to be a lasting post-pandemic trend. Um, we are proposing $1,615,164 to fund the following. Uh, implementation of the third phase of the board engaged compensation study as recommended by the county's consultant Gallagher. Implementation of a $15 per hour minimum pay for all full-time positions. We have some hard, hard working employees uh, whose positions only pay them uh, maybe $11 um, per hour, in some cases less. And we and so uh, appreciate the board's willingness, uh, at least in work sessions, to increase at least the, the minimum pay to $15 per hour. Uh, also would, would adjust pay, pay grades to prevent salary compression, which provides all full-time employees with not less than 4% increase to base salary proposes to increase the starting salaries for the deputy trainee position, deputy certified position, and senior deputy position to enhance the sheriff's office recruitment for quality law enforcement officers, and to also uh, cover the increase in employer retirement system contribution rate. Um, there has been a lot of talk by this board, um, and thoughtfully so, that county employees ought to receive a, a, a cost of living adjustment, particularly given the economic times, and there's not been a cost of living adjustment, at least in the last fiscal year. Um, what this budget will do is will take funds for a cost of living adjustment um, and other funds in order to meet these goals that I just listed 
in order to uh, to recognize our employees for the for the hard work that they do. The the other part of this is is for competitiveness, as I mentioned, because currently we have 28 vacancies uh, in county positions. Not just the sheriff's office, which also has its own issues with regard to uh, recruitment, but also other general and general government positions are vacant, and the county is having difficulty in receiving applications for qualified candidates, most notably the project engineer position in the county engineer department. Um, we have received no applications. Does that, that doesn't include the part-time neither. That's just the full-time, correct? That's correct. Okay, because, I mean, we have a bunch of the part-time too. Right. <laughs> This slide then shows the general fund appropriations by type. Um, you notice that this slide it shows a little bit more education appropriation. That's because this slide includes the county's almost a quarter of a million dollar contribution to College of the Albemarle. We participate with other area counties in helping to fund um, that very strong community college and its programs. This slide shows the largest uh, general fund appropriations or largest departments of uh, Curry Tuck County Schools, of course, uh, is $14,478,302. The funding of local school current expense uh, comes from an agreed school funding formula, plus uh, the addition this year of a 4.7 consumer price index multiplier. Uh, which results in a recommended local current expense appropriation in the amount of $13,078,302, which is $444,202 more than appropriated in the current fiscal year. The capital expense funding for the schools is recommended in the amount of $1,400,000 for the total appropriation as appears on the screen before you. The pupil enrollment projection for fiscal year 23 is 4,641 students, which is an increase uh, of 421 students over the current fiscal year projection. Uh, and so the bottom line is that the local current expense per student will increase by $126.48 uh, from this year's $2,691.01 per student to to uh, $2,817.49 per student. Mr. Manager, we, um, what do we rank on that far as the funding of the students? Aren't we, I know there's 115 districts. What are we, like 19th? No, no we're in the top 10. Are we the top 10? I, I, so. I, I don't recall right offhand. I think we're pretty close. I, I think, think we're, we're in the right top there. 25. I think we're. No, we're, we're higher than that. Are we really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Top yeah. 15. That's yeah. still strong. Yeah, very that's strong. strong. I mean, uh, yeah. which, yeah, and that's why I wanted that noted. Yep. Thank you. Uh, before I mention, uh, these are new county uh, <coughs> positions that are proposed uh, in, in this budget. Um, but it's also uh, notable that uh, there is one department and position that is being um, ended in, in this budget proposal, and that's the Economic Development Department. But uh, the, the, the board, I think you, the board understands, but I want the public to understand that that does not mean that the county is no longer in the economic development business, that the county does not want to see and welcome new business growth within the county, um, or that the county does not want to see uh, our existing businesses continue to grow and prosper. Um, what, what this is is a, an idea that perhaps we can move away from an, an older model of economic development that I've seen throughout my 30 some year career in other communities that just almost seems stale and is not working. Um, there is always a belief that an attempt to, to hit a home run and bring a big manufacturing plant like Alto or mm -hmm. something like that into a community and we know that just doesn't happen uh, anymore. We also I think understand that if a market is right uh, a business is going to come to your community uh, because it makes sense to them and it makes sense to them financially. No matter how much talking you do mm -hmm. and glad handing you do with them is not going to in and of itself bring a business into your community. Um, and, and, and so what, what, what we want to also look at is not just always trying to hit the home run or always trying to get outside business to come in, but why not try to find a way to focus on our existing businesses to help them expand, to grow, uh, to employ more of our citizens. And I think that's important to you give, start looking some more support because I think our local businesses want to grow and expand and 
having a new focus to work with our existing businesses in the county here, I think, is a is a win win for everybody. Certainly, and and so we we also see that there's opportunity for our, our existing departments to become more engaged in what, in essence, is economic development activity and encouragement. Uh, a prime example is our as our airport. Uh, that is becoming more and more uh, an attraction and and a base from which. Uh, Curry Tuck County's story and how we're open for business and encouraging business growth and development is being uh, given and received. Uh, our current airport manager and his staff are, are talking to, to all types of people from all over the country who are flying in and out of our airport. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and note, as, as the board knows, that uh, part of that operation has turned around to the point that our airport now is making uh, making money. I mean, we're bringing, it's bringing in revenue uh, rather than in the red as it always had been in, in, in its entire existence. So, I mean, it's like the airport's its own separate economic development entity. It's an engine, it's an <laughs> but it is. But we have, we have other departments that can also engage in economic development um, uh, through the manner in which it facilitates uh, such growth, uh, w whether that's the development services department, planning department. Uh, there are many other county departments uh, engaging more with the Chamber of Commerce. So. So we, mm -hmm. we are not closed for business by any means by removing the Economic Development Department as a funded agency within this budget. Uh, we, we are going to look for, for new dynamic ways to encourage uh, economic development and growth within the Why are you on that account. subject? <laughs> I got an email the other day from uh, the individuals I was talking to you about about doing <coughs> yes. some time. And uh, so they're ready to proceed with uh, something. So I'll be getting with you with that. But I. I proposed to the board at some time ago about getting getting a mainland website really designed for businesses and central planning calendars um, a place to go find events centrally located and and have it part of our economic development mm -hmm. engine so um, that's what I'm talking about but we're gonna be I'm getting together with the county manager get that moving forward hopefully sounds good uh, the county like you said like he said too on that like I mean the, the just these last few events I mean some of them are county the bulls and barbecue the right. whatever I mean the, the event that will yeah. uh, had over there at his place I mean the, these events they used to have like 60 to 80 people there's like thousands yep. I mean they're I mean and that's social media uh, you know where people are spreading the word and people want to go out and do something there's certainly great opportunity here on the mainland, and, and, and as Commissioner White said, that's what we've been talking about, moving forward to uh, to see if we can't help grow uh, activity and business here on the mainland. The operating budget uh, for utilities, um, of course, you see here on the screen that there are proposed rate increases throughout our enterprise funds. Uh, you will recall that these are rate increases that the board has previously approved after a study and analysis of our rate structures. And so as implemented by the board, uh, we are continuing with that, uh, that process. The total budget presented to you is an $88,265 uh, decrease over the current fiscal year, uh, but the original budget uh, and the revised budget uh, which uh, uh, it, it had extra money put into it through the, uh, a lot of it was schools, of course, through the acquisition of uh, $1 million of mobile units uh, for the school system, as well as the almost $21 million uh, renovation and expansion projects that are occurring at Moyock Elementary uh, and uh, Moyock Middle School. But in any event, um, we, we, even taking into account the revised budget, this proposed budget is $29,675,159 decrease over the current fiscal year. So we, we are maintaining uh, our, our funding and, and our tax rate uh, in this proposed budget. Ike? Okay, that looks like, and I may have misheard what you just, I may have misheard what you just said. Yeah, I see there's a 29, it's a 29 million, million dollar decrease that, over 21, 22. That, that, that is not. That, that is correct. Oh, that is gross. Okay, because 29. The original budget was passed. <coughs> then during the year you did budget. I mean, oh, okay. So right. brought it up uh, to 158 mm -hmm. something million, I think. And the 
because you funded the two school projects, Got it. you funded the million dollars, you carried forward some stuff that didn't get done okay. here before. Can we pause like for like ten minutes so people can snapshot <laughs> that at home for thirty social million media. dollar decrease? <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I couldn't let that go either. But I, not Miss Reed. But yeah, I thought you so, said twenty nine. He did. I, I did say he did. He said, so so. And I was counting along with him. Look at that. that looked like <laughs> a, I'm like one, two, three, four. Like twenty nine million decrease. <laughs> That's a well. That's pretty strong. <laughs> so the, the the next steps. Um, tonight's the presentation. Of the budget is required by law. Uh, staff would ask that the board uh, hold a public hearing and possible well public hearing on the budget. I know there is uh, further discussion that is desired uh, by board members about the budget, and you need time to review and digest uh, the budget. And so we would, we would propose that following the public hearing on June 6th that you not adopt the budget th that evening, but that we, in the intervening weeks between June 6th and your second meeting in, in June, have the opportunity for a budget, another budget work session uh, for the board to, to ask questions or make any modifications or refinements uh, to this proposed budget. Uh, because this is not the end of the process, but really just the beginning of the process, for the Board of Commissioners. And as, as the budget officer, I am now handing the budget recommended by me to you uh, for you to discuss, consider, refine, and, and do again as you see is appropriate for the fiscal policy of the county. And now, I was going to say, but as far as us getting the copies and all that and going online, that's what's yes, the dates we, and all that. I apologize. We don't have your workbooks tonight. We had some computer glitches or software glitches, which, which, uh, we were not able to, to put that together for you. It will be posted uh, on the county's website tomorrow, and we can also make available to the board uh, thumb drives with the, the entire workbook on it, or if you would like hard copies, let us know that, and we can, we can do that as well. No, I'd like, I mean, thumb drives, fine. I mean, that way we get time to go through everything and look at it all. I have a question. So after we have the public hearing and then we have a workshop, you don't have to present that again no. to the public? No. Correct. This is, this is my presentation to the board. It now becomes your budget uh, for you to consider and have additional work sessions, as many as you would like, in order that you become comfortable with the budget that you're about to adopt. Thank you. Um, Thank you. 